me, Jago Silva, uh, and I'm going to present why I like Lyft. Although I'm just using it, it for a little while, but I found some really interesting stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll read the paper sometimes as well, just in case. Okay. Lyft is from 2007, was created by David Pollack. Uh, was the first Scala, successful Scala web framework. And I found it very robust because it's in production for so many years and it's, it's being created for daily use, not just the beginnings, but you have screens, you have forms, you have wizards, you have a lot of stuff which is really useful to create web applications. Uh, why Lyft? Because Lyft is secure by default. Everything you do is secure, is scalable, is stateful and it comes with the batteries. So you don't need to buy them. Uh, okay, secure because you use uses functional programming and type safe to create every page. So the type safe on the pages means you always have HTML instead of strings and many of the OWL vulnerabilities, security vulnerabilities are safeguarded. The securities are things like uh, SQL, SQL injection, cross-site scripting, okay, uh, and many others. <coughs> Why is it scalable? It's stateful and state is on the JVM. Well, most applications have state. Where do you put your state in the applications most of the time? You put them on the cookie, you put them on the database, you put them on memcache, redis. You always have to store the user session somewhere. You always have to store some primary keys of some stuff somewhere. And with Lyft, all of this information keeps on the server on the JVM. It doesn't go through the wire. There's no overhead of resources, it's just on the single machine. So no data serialization overhead, which means, for example, if you have a, a form, you have multiple screens. So you have screen one, you put your username and your date of birth, user two. If you are over age, you see a screen. If you are under age, you see a different screen. So since you have the state on the JVM, on the server, you don't have to serialize data and put it, store it somewhere which is not. So it's always as a state, it's always as a JVM object, a Scala object, and you always have it. And most people prefer stateless because it's easy, easier to scale. You can add as many servers as you want and there is no the state is always stored somewhere so you don't have to worry about it. But in fact, in Nginx, server and HA proxy, they, uh, they have affinity session, which means once you send a request, when it is load balanced to server A, it will always go to server A. So on that point of view, it's as good as any other framework to load balance and scale it out. When I, I think I'm going really too fast. <laughs> Batteries included means Sensible defaults. The, when David Paula created the framework, he took a bit the best ideas of all the frameworks at the time, and one of them was Rails. And Rails has this convention over configuration, which is pretty much what Lyft brings you as well. You, you have the default packages when you create a snippet, which will come in ahead. You, you, Lyft does some checking and you'll find on the snippets package and it's automatic, you don't need to specify it. If you want MVC, you can have MVC. Uh, if you want it stateless, you can have it stateless for any page, any action on the whole throughout the whole framework. You have actors, you have lift actors, you have comment actors, you have scala actors, you can also use ACA actors. Uh, this works very well with comments, so you can send message through the actors and the comment will appear on the page. And it's functional. 
throughout you use partial functions for a lot of things and I think there's more stuff besides that for sure. So I'm going to talk about a few core concepts which I found different from all the other MVC frameworks and why uh, Lyft is different. So Lyft is what is called the view first. So when the request comes in, you will look for the template for the view of that request. After that, it's going to process the snippets, you process what is on the page and will be created the template. And the templates are only HTML type, no strings. Global Unique Identifier is a cryptography used to identify the fields on the, on the form, uh, the fields from the comment, and is associated this field with a function, a Scala function on the server. Okay? So when anything happens on the front end, on the, through this, Lyft is able to identify the fields and avoid a lot of attacks from replay attacks where, where you have to put the username, the fields inside the input form. Right? And the sitemap, this is used to, to guide the application, access to menus, access to pages. This guide is able to create menus and submenus. Yeah, and you can hide the links, you can show the links, you can create menus and display the menus on the right places of the page. Is everything okay so far? Any questions? So I'm going to pass it to my time now. Will you show examples? Yeah, we'll get to it. Okay, so templates. Templates are type safe. So this is the type and everything is created from a node C to a node C. So there's no strings and, and which means you have access to text elements, any kind of HTML element. For example, let me check the exact names. Yeah, you have access to text nodes, element nodes, C data nodes, any HTML node. Uh, the templates are created based on transformations, so which means we take the, the template, we transform a bit of it, we return it, we go again and we do it recursively. Recursive. Um, I'll show everything. The, the whole template at all times is XML, XHTML and HTML5 valid. They, if it's not valid, Leaf framework during development will tell you to make valid HTML. And is design, design, design friendly. Which means there is no Scala code, there is no funny templating language, there is just HTML. So for your designers it's very easy to code it, give the CSS class, make it look pretty. And you as the developer on your team only have to do the Scala code and change the CSS class here and there to make it work. So it makes use of Scala built-in XML syntax? Yes. Uh, this is the only way how to code templates? No, you can also use uh, Scala, Scala, what is it called? The template? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But then you get less safety. So like I said, the sitemap can create the list of pages, manages the access control, and organizes the navigation by creating menus, submenus, group menus, breadcrumbs, and all of this can be embedded into the page. So other sweet things I like about it is lazy loading, which I will demonstrate also have REST and Async REST API. You have great JSON support. So you have a case class, you have a record, which is uh, one of the uh, persistence frameworks, and you can just dot has JSON and you have a JSON ready. The assets can be timestamped. For example, most of the times you see a JavaScript file 
and you change the file and you have to change some kind of timestamp query string so the browser or the client decaches the file so it doesn't get stuck in the old version of the file in the cache. So this comes out of the box, you don't need to download anything or any extra dependency. Uh, Lyft has two constructs which are very good, which is box. Box is a, a kind of option monad, as they call it. So a box can be empty, full, or have a failure state. So if you imagine the option in Scala, you see the box, and then we have the Scala Z validation. This is a sort of scale, this is in between. And the try all is another nice feature. So another thing I like about it is that it's anything on the framework you can change. If you don't want to use the sitemap, you don't have to. If you don't want to, if you want to have MVC, you can. If you want to have it stateless, you can have everything stateless. This, the configuration options are huge. You can use any persistent layer. You can have Mongo, you can have anything. You can use Play Framework Unorm, you can use Scala Query. It's just, it's very flexible, you can change everything on the framework. Uh, 